uh, we clearly don't want to give you strategies that uh, might be rubbish or might be outdated. So what we want to talk about today is what works for business and what we do for people. Uh, there's a lot of disabled people out there. Uh, if you go around the internet, you're going to see a lot of ads about make $300 an hour without having any qualification. Uh, and I'll tell you one thing, it's not true. Making money online is hard work and it takes good, good practices. Um, our advice can really be trusted because we've been doing SEO for literally hundreds of websites now. Uh, we have clients ranking for keywords, very competitive keywords like buy websites, sell websites, boobs, <laughs> assets, or even Charlie Shane, as uh, Andrew said before. So when it comes to SEOs, there's really two schools of style, which are white hat SEO as opposed to black hat SEO. White hat SEO is what search engines want you to do to promote your website and really ethical practices, as in doing press releases, guest blog posting to someone else's website that's relevant to yours, and <coughs> doing really like practical marketing that any, other, any decent company would do. Black Hat SEO, on the other hand, is more spammy stuff, as you will see in, for example, Viagra campaigns, where they're gonna spam all over the web to get, to get links to their websites. Uh, you can, of course, make money from Black Hat SEO, but uh, as you're playing against the search engine and not with the search engine, they're going to catch you at some point and your site is going to just get banned and you won't make any money anymore. So if you really want to make long-term revenue and big, big money, uh, what we really advise is just going for the ethical way so that um, you can have a long run with your business and make, a, and make money over time. Um, so, so let's take an example from the news. Have you guys heard about Jesse Penny recently? All right, it's, uh, it's a big retailer in the US, and what they did is spend millions of dollars buying links, paid links from other, from other people to link to their website, and they ended up ranking for very high keywords, very competitive keywords, such as beds, dresses. Uh, but eventually, <laughs> buying links is something that's really not advised by, by the search engine, and they ban you for that. So they got caught up by Google, and it went to the New York Times, and everyone talked about them. And now, not only don't they get any traffic from search engines because they got banned, but they also have very bad, uh, it killed their brandings because they've been using illegal practices. Uh, whereas you can oppose it to Amazon.com. When you type any product name on Google, most of the time you're gonna see Amazon.com on the first page. Uh, but they've been using uh, very white hat practices and very ethical practices and have no danger of being kicked out of the first page. And they're gonna make millions of the time and much more money than JCPenney. Uh, so that's, that's really the difference between the two. And, if you're launching a business online and you're a reputable business, you should really think about going uh, about the practices your uh, SEO company is using. Uh, so now let's go into what works and how uh, Google sees your website and how it goes viral and people talk about it. So obviously, search engines can't read. They're like they're robots that go on your website and eventually analyze the keyword density, see how much, how many times. Uh, a keyword is mentioned, but they can't really tell if your content is very good or not. However, they can say if it's unique or not. They can look at the database and say, all right, someone already wrote that, or they didn't. Uh, so what you want as the first step of promoting your website is having original, unique content that nobody already spoke about. So, and even though the, the crawlers can tell if you have quality content or not, as in if you have good style, if, um, if it's interesting, they can't say that. But even if they can't say that, you want your user that when, once you get your traffic, you want them to find it interesting to stay on your website and eventually monetize them. Because traffic is one thing. Getting people to click on your website is one thing. It's another thing to get money from them and make money from your traffic. And that's ultimately what you're looking for. Um, so your content should be your first strategy. Uh, but then, if you, if, you, if you are working in very popular niches, such as celebrities for some of our clients, well, there's like hundreds of thousands of good quality content about Jennifer Lopez, Justin Bieber, and all these celebrities that everyone talks about. So how does Google say, this, this page should be number one, and this page should be number 200? Obviously, the number one gets so much more traffic. Uh, well, they use social proof. So they will look at what people say about your website and say, well, a reputable, trustable source about celebrities said, link to this article and say it's good, so that it's probably trustable, and we want them to be on top of the, of, the, of the rankings because it seems relevant to people that are in the industry. So um, 
Google is going to look at how trustable you are, and then they will look at uh, who you talk about and eventually grant higher rankings to people you trust because they trust you. So it's all a social proof game. Um, now, as, as, um, as Andrew said, and context is really important as well, as in when people talk about you, one of, the job of your role as the SEO is to make sure that you get the right anchor text for the keywords you want to rank for. So not only should trustable people talk about you, should talk about you in the right terms, as in link to you in the right terms. Uh, now let's look at how momentum is built, because what Google really wants is to promote stuff that is relevant right now. For example, if you type Earthquake Japan in Google, you want to know about the earthquake that happened a few days ago. You don't want to know about an earthquake that happened 20 years ago. And there's a lot of earthquakes in Japan, right? So how do they know as a, as a but? Well, they'll go over social media for first. Because everyone tweets, for example. And tweets are very, very time limited. As in, my status update right now is going to be relevant right now. But in 10 years, I don't really want to know about it. So they'll go over social media and what people talk about right now. And a large part of the rankings today is Time, time relevant. So you want people to talk about you right now and to be time relevant right now. So what you do is you share what you, is what the, the, your content on social media is. Uh, and you want people to keep talking about you so that you keep being to, uh, time relevant. So that's one of the strategies you want to. And usually when people talk a lot about stuff on Twitter, on Facebook and so on, well, eventually you get bloggers that pick up these status updates and write comprehensive articles about it, or like journalists. So that's exactly what you want. You want to be on social media first. People talk about you that way these days. And eventually, people, people pick that up and write about it and want to share it, because it's, it's relevant to people. So they want, they want to get traffic as well. So um, the, second, the second step when you do SEO is really to get solid content ri written about what you're doing. That can be done through guest blogging, uh, article publishing, press releases, and like many other ways. Um, so that, that's really what you want to do. Um, you have to consider, though, that we're talking about high competition niches right now. If you have in lo a low competition niche, usually the time relevance is not going to be as important. And just having people writing hard content about you is going to be enough. But if you're talking about something that's really time relevant, you should also consider social media. And that's something search engines are going through towards to uh, these days. Uh, and one thing you want to do as well, as I, talk, as I say, there's a lot of time relevancy in, the, in SEO. And what you want is velocity. As in, if people talk about you and stop right away, well, Google's going to be like, well, it's not really relevant anymore. So why, why should it be on our results? So the one thing you want to do is people spike talk about you, but they keep talking about it over time. And even though it goes down, you still want like the earthquake in Japan to take the example again. You still, you're still going to hear about it as um, a nuclear catastrophe, or like a risk of a nuclear catastrophe. And you still want to find the results, and there's still going to be people writing about it in five years. So you really want to stay in people's mind and keep the momentum going. Because if you don't, then search engine won't talk about you either. Um, now let's talk about videos and images. <laughs> uh, even though like, the web used to be very text-based back in the days, and nowadays it's more based on videos, images, and apps. Like, for example, Facebook is an app. Uh, how, how would Google rank that? They don't because there's a war between Facebook and Google, but let's not go into that. Uh, <laughs> so videos and images, uh, search engine can't watch videos, and it can't say what it talks about. Search engines can't see what an image displays. So as, uh, as Andrew said, what you want to do is put content behind it through what we call alt tags, as in you want to show search engines what your video and all your image is about. Uh, some good ideas as well when you structure a website would be that when you do a video, you have a transcript of your video as a text form down there so that not only for your user it's easier because they might have like audition problems or whatever, you need to think about that, but it's also useful for search engines that will know what you're talking about. Um, so, uh, so that's it.
like test like I test on like I got like hundred websites where I just test stuff. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, next month they do that for the clients, took, and that's it. And so do you every think month we change the strategies. Does the algorithm change for various like oh, subjects? And it changes and very often. Like it yeah. changed the yeah. last month, like twelve percent of the results changed with the new update. With the it's called Google Panda update. Yeah. They like took all the content farms down, like sites like Isai and articles and like very uh, very generic article sites. Yeah. They all went down. Uh, and uh, that was part of uh, something we used as well. All right. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, now they're gone. Let's do, let's figure something else. So it comes as a bit of a shock when that happens. Exactly. It's like you can't know because like, you go to sleep and you wake up and all the results might have changed. So it's really, it's really a, tough work, a tough job in the sense that you don't have direct controls on the results. Yeah, yeah. It's just you do everything you can so that, so that it does well, yeah. but uh, you, you don't have the end result. Like you don't control the so you couldn't, you couldn't get a company up to the top and then say we've done our job. Exactly.